good morning or good evening rather. I'm sorry. Good evening. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you so much. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the first Bible study at Fourth Baptist Church of the year 2024. I want to take this moment to wish everyone a happy new year. And we pray God's blessings upon you. And we pray that God will continue uh, to shower you with power from on high. And in the providence of God be upon you that you might be able to prosper. And uh, we just want you to know that we're excited that we're here in another year, 2024. <clears throat> Deborah Grimes, thank you so much for sharing. Roy Coppich, Ivy Vaughn, thank you so much. Melinda Falk, uh, thank you all so much. Welcome to our first Bible study of the year. Amen. To God be the glory. I, I'm excited about that uh, because God did not have to allow us uh, to be here uh, uh, any longer. But we're grateful and we're thankful unto the Lord uh, for his providential care. Amen. And uh, amen. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that we are excited and we want you to get excited over what God is doing, uh, not only in your life, but in the lives of your family, your loved ones, your friends, your church. Just praise God from whom all blessings flow. Reverend Peggy Goulet, thank you for sharing with us. I know Deacon Goulet is watching as well. Juliet Williams, thank you so much uh, for being with us on this evening. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. We are excited that God continues uh, to bless you along the way. Before we go any further, let us go to God with the word of prayer. Angel Roberts, thank you so much for being with us. Gracious God, our Father, as we come now, we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory for the great things that thou hast done. Bless our time together, bless our study together, increase our wisdom and our knowledge of thy word, that we might know how to live better for you. Bless, Father God, as only you know how to do. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Nina Dunstan, thank you so much <clears throat> for sharing with us today. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, it's exciting. How many of you are so happy, so grateful that God has allowed us to make it over one more time? La Barbara Owens, thank you, my friend, for sharing with us tonight. I appreciate that. Amen. Valerie Dozier, thank you so much. William Hayes Jr., praise God. Made it back from, uh, what's that foreign country down there? Florida. Amen. Connie Baltimore, we're happy to have you with us tonight. Sharon Gray, we thank God for your presence tonight as well. To God be the glory. Listen, <clears throat> it's interesting uh, that there are so many of us who are celebrating birthdays. Amen. And we just thank God for that. Wayne Shoemate, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'm Yvonne. Uh, Pinky Gray, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight as well. <laughs> But listen, we want to wish happy birthday. We want to shout it loud from the rooftops and everywhere around so that people can hear of what God, great things God is doing for his people. I want to take this moment to wish Sister Cheryl Brown a happy birthday. She will be celebrating her birthday on tomorrow. Amen. On tomorrow. Amen. To God be the glory. Man, uh, Lillian Toppins, thank you so much. Uh, for being with us on tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. So, <clears throat> we are so excited about the things that God is doing and God has done in the lives of his people that we don't know what to do. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, this chat is still on break right now, but they will return on January the 26th at 7 p.m. Amen. To God be the glory. Our youth Bible study will be tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, Deacon, Deacon S. Uh, 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 Dixon, along with Reverend Dixon, have already posted the information whereby you might join us by way of Zoom. So please join in on tomorrow night. Amen. To God be the glory. Also, let me thank you so much that if you have lost, suffered the loss of a loved one or some type of catastrophe in your family or in your life, Please reach out to our grief ministry. We want to know, you to know that we're here for you and that we're here uh, to assist you, to support you, and pray for you along the way. Amen. Dolores George, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. 
A grief ministry can be reached if you pull up the app called griefshare.org and search for Fourth Baptist Church, uh, 726 Portsmouth, Virginia. Uh, amen. And they will lead you to us. Or you can call us directly on phone by on a list number 757-393-6657. And we'll be happy to pray and support you along the way. Our prayer line is open and available to you. You can call us on our prayer line, 267-807-9605 with extension 985155. Give us a call. We want to pray for and we want to pray with you along the way. Big West, thank you so much, my friend, for sharing with us on tonight. Amen. I want you to be in prayer for Brother Calvin Freeman. Be in prayer for uh, Sister Dolores George. Uh, Selena Seymour, thank you for sharing with us tonight. Pray for our Herbert Hall, Mabel Simmons, William Smith, Michael Jones, Marsha Johnson, Mary Norman, Joe Randolph, Jeanette Shoemake, Lucretia White, Louise Bowser, Onita Allen, Reverend and Mrs. Clyde Doxey, Reverend Frieda Thomas, Francie Hasty, Goldie McDaniel, Suzette Watson, Sharon Hampton, Melinda Falk, uh, Ian Washington, A Antoine Jones, Alfred Booker, Miss uh, Audrey uh, Davis, uh, Ronald Jones, Sonia Claude, Deborah Grimes, Dorothy Spruill, Martha Moss, Carl Mosley, Cheryl Brown, uh, Reverend Florence Pender, Xavier Orton, Beverly Shelton, First Lady Terry Dortch, uh, Charlie Howell Jr., Beatrice Coleman, Ganetta Mosley, Sharon uh, Gray, Baby Yara, Vera Ransom, Betty and Richard Smith, Lillian Orton, Maggie King, uh, Glenda Morrison, Gail Hendricks, uh, Patrick Hector, Deborah Thomas, William Gray, Willie Gray, Mary McLeese, uh, Brenda Hardison, uh, Louis Spruill, amen, and Pinky Gray, amen. Lift them up in your prayers uh, as you go out and throughout the day, amen. The Day family, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us and joining in with us on this evening. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, I feel good because we're back together again, getting ready to study the Word of God. I miss you guys uh, for that brief time. I enjoy. Don't let me. Don't get me wrong. I have enjoyed that break. Amen. I think that I can get used to that rather quickly. I did nothing. I was so lazy, but I don't want to get that way. Amen. I didn't do anything but whatever I wanted to do. Amen. To God be the glory. Kim Pender, thank you so much for sharing with us on this evening. Amen. Listen, we're going to be in the book of Acts, chapter number 20. Acts, chapter number 20 tonight, uh, as we began to study the Word of God. Amen. And I want you all to know that during this year, I need, you need, we all need to make God a priority in our lives. We need to make sure uh, that God is number uno, number one uh, in our lives, and that everything comes secondary to God. Maggie King, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Really appreciate uh, your presence with us. <laughs> Amen. So in Acts chapter 20, Paul now purposes in his heart and his mind to go to Jerusalem. But not only was it Paul's uh, intent for him to get there, but Paul says in this word that the Holy Spirit was pressing him. The Holy Spirit was leading and guiding him to get to Jerusalem. Richard Kanster, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. And please tell Yvonne that we said hello. Amen. But the Holy Spirit was moving in the midst. And the Holy Spirit pressed upon Paul to make this decision to be, get to Jerusalem as expeditiously as he could. Amen. So Paul now sets forth in this chapter to make his way to Jerusalem. But before he does, Paul decides how he's going to get there. Something had happened previously that there was people who had plotted against Paul, people who had uh, declared that they would have him killed, uh, people who were trying to take his life. All of those things were taking place. So Paul, along with the Holy Spirit, says it's time for you to move on uh, to safer territory as well as to get to Jerusalem. 
Onita Allen, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Gloria Boone, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. So Paul now, being pressed by the Spirit of God, purposes in his heart and his mind to make his way to Jerusalem. Jeanette Shoemate, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. It's interesting, as I read that text, uh, that Paul did not decide on his own, but God is one of those guys that can see beyond and down the road before we even get there. So God knew that trouble was brewing and that Paul needed to get out of that place. So the Jews that were there and those individuals that were there plotted against Paul. Amen. And as they were plotting against him, they were trying to figure out what would be the best place to attack him. Amen. Shall we attack him while he's preaching on Sunday morning? Shall we attack him while he's teaching in the synagogues? Shall we attack him while he's traveling down the highway? Or should we attack him while he's sailing on a boat? Whichever way uh, that uh, is more favorable unto us, that is the way they declared that they would attack Paul. But God is so good. Paul, along with those who were traveling with him, decided to do two things. One, <clears throat> Paul decided to walk there. He did not decide uh, to uh, go by boat. Uh, he let his friends go by boat. Amen. So Paul completed his preaching and his teaching, and he began on this journey to make his way to Jerusalem. Now, there are several reasons why he was making this journey. One, he had to stop by the way. There's several of the churches, places where he had already started churches. Paul was now collecting funds so that he, uh, as well as the other churches within the region, could be a blessing to their brothers and their sisters. He collected this money, and Paul wanted to deliver this money or these funds uh, to the church that was in desperately needed it. Amen. <clears throat> Notice something. Paul didn't send it by somebody else. Paul wanted to deliver it by himself or for himself. Amen. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, sometimes it's good to send people to, to, uh, to represent you, but oftentimes it's even better when you can do it yourself. Amen. I often make this statement. It's good to have the deacons to call the members. It's good to have the deacons and the deaconess and ministry leaders to go visit individuals at the hospital. But sometimes, brothers, you need to have brothers and sisters, you need to know that people want to see and hear you, especially if you're the pastor. They want to know that their leader, their shepherd, uh, is concerned and cares and is praying for them. So oftentimes you need to make sure <clears throat> that you still send the deacons and the deaconess and the uh, ministry leaders, but oftentimes you need to make sure that you go yourself. Even every now and then, you got to make that sacrifice and go yourself. Debbie White, thank you so much <clears throat> for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So Paul now begins his journey, and he begins to go uh, and make his way to Jerusalem. Amen. So these people may have planned an attack of Paul uh, one way or the other, but notice what it is. They did not attack him because they were afraid of it because they were afraid of the crowd, for one. But they were afraid uh, of the power uh, and the authority that God had placed within Paul's heart. Paul preached the gospel. Straight up, straight down, Paul preached the gospel. Paul, T-I-W, told it like it was. Amen. Tell it like it is what Paul was saying, and they used to say in the old days. Amen. But Paul spoke the word. Paul did not get all off into the political scene. He did not get all into uh, this or that. Paul just preached Jesus Christ, crucified, buried, and risen again. And for that reason, they began to want to kill Paul. Why? Because it went against tradition. It went against their teaching. It went against their belief. But Paul didn't care about that. Paul wanted to be true to God. Paul wanted to be faithful unto God. So Paul just preached the gospel. Deacon Mike White, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So Paul now arrives in the city of Troas. And when he gets there, uh, Paul begins to do what he's always done. He begins to teach. He begins to preach the word of God. 
Paul also had something else in his mind that as he began to visit these cities, Paul knew that this would be the last time that they would see him and he would see them. So Paul now goes on and he begins to preach. And as he begins to preach, Paul preached one of those marathon messages. Amen. Brother Hudson, thank you so much. Or Sister Hudson, thank you all so much uh, for sharing with us on tonight. Amen. So listen, <clears throat> if I preached as long as Paul preached on this occasion, y'all would run me out of town. Paul began to preach early in the morning. And Paul did not finish preaching until late, late night. Amen. Paul preached a long time. That is a tremendous message that Paul had to share with the people of God. And the Bible says that Paul was preaching, and he was on the third story of the building. And as he was there, uh, then individuals became restless for one reason or another. Uh, the, the, the heat that was there, uh, the, the atmosphere, uh, all of these things played a part uh, into the weariness of uh, individuals. Kathy Smith, thank you so much, my friend. <laughs> For sharing with us tonight. You're not late. You're on time. Amen. So we praise God for you being with us tonight. So Paul preached. And there was a young man that was sitting in the window. Perhaps maybe he was trying to get a breeze that blew through the window. Or perhaps he had worked hard all day long. Perhaps he was tired now because he expected to come to hear things from Paul. But not at that length of time. And you know what it is, my brothers and sisters. When you go to church and the preacher preaches over an hour, you get restless. Amen, somebody. Let me back that up. Let me rewind that. If the preacher preaches over 30 minutes, you get restless. Amen. And you began to get weary. This young man, because of his tiredness, because of the, uh, the, the, the heat that was in the room, because of the crowd that was in there and the, 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 the heat that was coming from them, this young man saw the place where he could catch a breath of fresh air. But wouldn't you know it, the more Paul preached, the more he tried to stay awake. And the Bible says that finally, uh, tiredness or whatever it was, overcame him. Amen. And he fell out the window three stories. Amen. He fell three stories out of the window. Alicia Jackson, thank you, my daughter, for, for sharing with us tonight. Tell Mama we said hello. Amen. Tell Tell Dave we said hello. Amen. This young man fell out of the window. The building was three stories, and he fell three stories to the ground. And not only did he fall three stories to the ground, but the Bible says that he died when he fell. Amen. So here it is. Paul's preaching with power and authority. It's hot in the room. Amen. It's suffocating in the room. The heat is enormous. People have worked all day long, and they're tired. And Paul picked this opportunity to preach one of his marathon messages. Amen. Over six hours preaching. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Can you see me preaching over six hours? Gloria Smith and Carolyn Taylor, don't say a word. Amen. Preaching over six hours. Do you imagine or can you imagine who would be left in the church? Amen. At the end of the preaching, people will be getting up and they will be walking out. Amen. They would do like they did in the old days, hold a finger up, tiptoe out of the building because pastor is just taking too long to bring this message. But this young man stayed there and he tried to fight his weariness. He tried to overcome his tiredness. He tried everything that he could to make sure that he stayed awake. But he could not. It overcame him. And he fell out the window. Amen. Carolyn Taylor, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. But in the midst of all of that, God had a plan. Now Paul is preaching. And after Paul began to preach and teach and all that, Paul had something in the back of his mind that he knew that this would be the last time that he would preach and teach in this particular setting. So therefore, Paul held on to that and began to go head on and preach. Tanisha Smith, thank you so much for sharing with us. Betty Smith, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. Amen. 
So, can you imagine there were no lights like in that room like in our time of day? There, there were no uh, lights hanging from the ceiling. They had oil, oil lamps. And the heat from the oil lamps mixed with all the heat from the people that were in there. It was a summer night, perhaps, and it was just hot. Amen. And this man fell from the window. Make sure, my brothers and sisters, when you go to church and when you participate in the service of the Lord, that you are extremely rested, that you are uh, not weary, but you stay alert. Because, listen, you may miss something in the midst of your weariness and your tiredness. I preached a sermon one day, don't leave church too soon. Amen. In other words, a lot of people have the tendency to leave church before the benediction is given. And sometimes the Spirit of God may arrive right at the moment of the benediction. And, and the Spirit may keep us there or for another few moments. And if you leave, you miss the outpouring of the Spirit. You miss the anointing of the Spirit. You miss the, the God just controlling uh, the service uh, at the church the way he wanted it to be. Amen. So don't leave church too early. Amen. Don't get weary in saying that I've got to go. Amen. Deacon Forrest Robinson Jr., thank you, my friend, uh, for sharing with us uh, tonight. Amen. So Paul now hears all of the corrosion, all of these people uh, talking about and screaming and hollering that this man had fallen out the window. Kim Ozimon, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. So what does Paul do? Paul does not panic. Paul does not scratch his head and wonder what he's going to do. Paul just gets up, goes down to where the young man is, kneels beside him, lays upon him. Amen. And Paul declares, there is life still in this young man. Amen. Everybody else may have been weeping and wailing, but Paul knew what the Spirit of God could do. Paul knew what the power of God could do. And Paul simply looked at them and said, hey, he's still alive. He's still got a lot of life in him. Amen. Lillian Perkins, thank you for sharing with us. Melinda Bullock, thank you, my friend, uh, for sharing with us on tonight. Amen. So Paul now goes down, and he begins to uh, lay himself upon this young man. He begins to talk uh, to the people that was there. And so therefore, he says unto them, don't worry about this. God is in control. And this young man may have fallen from the window from three stories, and you may have thought he died, but God sustained him. Amen. God kept him. And here it is. God knew what he needed to do through the life of Paul. I told you in chapters before that at the sight of Paul, that at, at the touch of his garment or clothing or whatever, people thought that healing came as a result of it. Amen. So God now infuses Paul with healing power, miraculous power, so much so that Paul lies upon this young man and his life comes back in him. Amen. Can you imagine what the people may be thinking at this time? How in the world, who in the world is this man Paul? He must have a special connection with God. Oh, yes, he did. Paul had a special connection with God not because of Paul, but because God chose Paul. Remember when Paul uh, was on his road to Damascus and God told Ananias, don't fear him because he is a chosen vessel for me. Amen. So therefore, God chose Paul to do miraculous things for him. And Paul now is living up to the standard or living up to the commitment or the prediction that God has already made. So God has already uh, begun to use him. And God can use you too. Amen. You just got to learn how, I've got to learn how, we all have to learn how to commit our ways unto the Lord, to please the Lord. I told you at the beginning of this message that in 2024, we ought to make God a priority in our lives. Amen. Not the church, not the preacher, not the deacons, not, not the members, and not, not my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. We need to make God a priority in this, in our lives. Eleanor Bell, thank you so much 
for sharing with us, my friend. Good to see you in 2024. And Eleanor says in her comment, God has the power or the power of God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, you just don't know what God can do if you would just call on him. Amen. If you would seek him, amen, God will respond to your requests and your prayers. I know I'm right about that. Amen. Many of you out there have experienced it for yourself. You've seen how God healed you. You've seen how God delivered you. You've seen how God rescued you. You've seen how God and what God has done for you in your life. Amen. Somebody said it this way. <clears throat> Amen. When I look back over my life and see what the Lord has done for me, my soul shouts hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Amen. We all don't deserve the power of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, or the love of God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God is still in control. Amen. Ellen Bell says that uh, infusion was the, the God-given power uh, for Paul and his seekers. Amen. And it's the same thing with us. God will do the same thing with us. Listen, you've got to get your mind right. Amen. You've got to make sure that your focus is upon the Lord and not upon your problem. Listen, when you have problems and situations and all of those type of things, stop looking at your problem and start looking at God. Amen. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Seek ye the Lord. Amen. And God will open up all of these doors unto you. Amen. Connie Baltimore, thank you so much. Dr. Patrick Emmanuel, thank you for being with us on this evening. Amen. So God is working a miracle through Paul. Notice what I just said. I did not say Paul is working a miracle. God is the instrument that uh, Paul is the instrument that God used to bring this young man back to life. Amen. And God can use you. Amen. To share the gospel, the good news, to save somebody's soul. Amen. You can't save them, but the word of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God can in fact save that individual. But you got to tell them. You got to show them. You got to share the gospel. You got to bring it the way that God wants it to be brought. Sufa Alquan, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. I hope I got your name right. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, let's go to verse 13 through 17. And we find ourselves that Paul is beginning to leave. Can you imagine after being in this place for over three years, teaching and preaching the people of God, sharing the word of God. Now Paul says, i got to leave you. Can, it's, it's sort of like you've got the best pastor in the world, you've got the best teacher in the world, and all of a sudden, that pastor says, I'm leaving, I'm retiring. Amen. Uh, God has called me to a greater work. Amen. And you're sitting there saying, what have we done? You haven't done anything. It's just God moving and working in the life of that preacher, that pastor, that leader, uh, to bring him or her to a greater work for him. Amen. You see, God never intended for any of us to stay upon this earth for life. Amen. For eternity. Amen. God will move us to the places where we can get that next level of growth and maturity in him. Amen. To God be the good. And the best way to start as I shared with a young man not too long ago, the best way to start is to read your Bible every day, pray every day, and keep your mind stayed on God. Amen. You've got to be razor, uh, uh, razor uh, 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 intent on, on, on keeping the Word of God and living right for God. Amen. You've got to have that laser mentality. That's what I was looking for. That laser mentality where you can pinpoint exactly what you want God to do and what you want to do for God. And when you do, God will show up in your life. If you don't believe me, try it. Amen. Stop being, the, stop being led by people uh, that, that just want what you have or get what you have or lead you astray, uh, lead you from stop worshiping God and following them. But when you uh, have that laser focus on God, that 
as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. God will show up and God will show out in your life. God will work miracles through you. Amen. Amen. God will. But you've got to be willing to get that close to God. It all depends on your relationship with the Lord. Amen. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. So Paul uh, was on his way now trying to make his way to Jerusalem. But there are several stops in between where Paul is going uh, to uh, stop and preach the word of God. Amen. Valerie Dozer says, have the right mindset and heart set to serve God. And that's what it's all about. The Bible says this, when a man's ways pleases God, he will keep his enemies to be at peace with him. In other words, when you focus on the Lord, live right for the Lord, people will misunderstand you. People will not like what you have to stay or stand for. But that's all right. Just because they don't like you does not mean that God does not like you. And vice versa, y'all. Don't forget this. Stop trying to tell people who God likes and who God doesn't like and who God chose, has chosen and who God has not chosen. Just because you don't like a person, just because you don't agree with a person, does not mean that God does not agree. Amen. That person may be doing the will of God. Amen. And the only thing you fo focus on is yourself. Amen. What's in it for me? Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. So stop worrying about all of that kind of craziness and just live to please God. Amen. So Paul now begins to leave. And as I said before, Paul had two choices. He could either walk or he could either sail by boat. Amen. So Paul's associates wanted him to ride on the boat with them. But Paul decided that he wanted to walk. And as he walked, he said goodbye to his uh, individuals who were traveling with him, put them on the boat, and they sailed away. And now Paul now uh, began to walk to this uh, to Troas, and as he went there, Paul encountered other individuals. Amen. Paul stayed to the last minute that he could in order to preach and teach the word of God. Amen. And to ensure that this young man who fell out the window was all right. Amen. So Paul now decides to sail past Ephesus. And the reason he decided to sail past Ephesus is because Paul felt that if he had stopped at Ephesus, he had to spend an enormous amount of time with the people at Ephesus. And Paul did not want to get tied up and tangled up uh, and, and tied down in Ephesus. He was on a mission, and that mission was to get to Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, what an awesome point to stop right there. Amen. Sometimes God gives us a task. God gives us an assignment. God gives us a, 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 a work to be done. But we began to listen to the stuff that goes on in church. We began to listen to the stuff and look at the stuff that goes on in church and in the community politics and everything else and rather than doing the will of God and accomplishing the task that he has given unto us we get sidetracked amen I'll get back to that later is what we tell ourselves I'm not going to forget about that but I must pay attention to what is over here right now amen so my brothers and sisters don't lose focus always keep your focus on the assignment that God gives you Eleanor Bell says, always follow your mission in the work of God. Amen. Always remember, listen, going through life, let me give you a good example. <clears throat> Traveling through life is not easy. Sometimes you be riding down the road and all of a sudden because they got road work taking place, you have to get off on a detour. And that detour may take you two or three miles off the uh, uh, street that you want to be traveling on. But it will always bring you back to the street that you would desire and then should be working and traveling on. So, yes, we may have to take a detour every now and then, but your main focus should be to always follow your mission, always follow the accomplishment, always follow the will of God, always follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. 
Don't get sidetracked by people who don't mean God no good. Don't mean the church no good. Don't even mean you any good. The only thing is, if you are dealing with people and the only thing that they can say to you is always negative stuff, you need to get away from them. They come to church and find something wrong with church. Church is beautiful. The worship service was beautiful. Everything was going well. But they want you to not see all of that. Did you see the light bulb was out in the roof? Did you see that the speaker went out? Did you hear uh, that, uh, uh, that, that they didn't sing that loud? Listen, stop paying attention to that mess. That's what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants to, to disturb, to distract you from your worshiping God. And he does it in so many different ways. Amen. Somebody comes in church and they uh, may not look like us and they may not be like us. Amen. They may be full of juice. Amen. You know what I'm talking about, juice, alcohol. Or, or they may be having an episode. And the first thing the devil says is stop worshiping and pay attention to him or her. Amen. Now, I'm not saying don't pay attention. Somebody, the ushers, perhaps need to make sure that we are aware of what's going on. But at the same time, if you are worshiping God, don't stop worshiping God in order to see what's going on or what the commotion is around the corner. Amen. That's why I tell people when you bring children to church and the babies begin to cry, it does not bother me. Let them cry. If they cry, I know they're all right. Amen. To God be the glory. So my brothers and sisters, don't get distracted is what I'm trying to say. Doing worship service. Don't get distracted from, uh, by things that happen in the, in the city and your environment to keep you from coming to church and worshiping the Lord. Amen. Woke up this morning and I had a toe ache. And that's the worst toe ache that I ever had in my life. This is what y'all say. Worst toe ache I had in my life. It just so happened to be on Sunday morning. But the Lord knows my heart. And I'm not going to press my way out. Amen. But listen, when you're in need of something from God, I don't care how bad you are. You're going to get up and you're going to call on his name and you're going to go. Amen, somebody. Olita Allen says, keep your eyes on God. Keep your mind on God. Keep your focus on God. And keep telling God that here I am. Send me. Use me. I come to worship. I wonder... If I have any worshipers listening to me today, I mean true worshipers that will call upon the name of the Lord, that will worship the Lord in spite of everything that's going on uh, around them. Amen. I watch on Sunday morning. Well, as long as the music is being sung and the choir is singing wonderfully and beautifully, they they, they, they happy. But as soon as the music stops, as soon as the preaching begins, as soon as... Uh, things began to go well with, with the ministry, they stop and they look out the window. They look down at the phones. They, they look down at the shoes and they start brushing the clothes. Try, it's nothing but the devil trying to distract you. The devil don't want you to hear what's coming from the pulpit. Amen. So let me move on. Let me move on. To God be the glory. So Paul now is on his way and most of the time that he spent in Acts, we see Paul the evangelist. But now, in this chapter, we see Paul as a pastor. We see Paul as a leader. We see Paul as a shepherd. And Paul now begins to pour out his heart to those who are listening to him, those who are sharing with him. Paul wants them to know where his heart really is. You see, you cannot spend three years with a church or with people teaching and preaching and, and, and shepherding them and not have some type of compassion or feel for them. Amen. Amen. So, Selena, thank you so much. Uh, we're asking that God will bless you as well. Amen. So, here it is. Paul's been there for three years and now Paul knows that as he comes to Asia Minor, uh, he knows that he is going to be leaving them and they will never see him again. So, the the pastor in Paul begins to come out now. Paul simply says unto them, I've been with you a long time, and I'm paraphrasing. I've been with you a long time. I've done my best to teach you the word of God, to preach the word of God, 
to help you, to support you, to pray for you, to visit you when you were sick. I, I've done my best to do all that a shepherd ought to do. But Paul says, I've got to leave you now. Amen. And as he begins to pour out his heart to them, can you imagine the feeling that they may have from knowing that Paul is not going to be there? Amen. Tion Williams, I hope I said that right. Tion or Tion Williams, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us today. Amen. So here it is. Paul says, I proclaim the word of God to you. I taught you the word of God from sun up to sundown. Every week I've taught you the word of God. I did not ask you for a penny. My, I made my living with my hands. I was a tent maker. And, and, and I didn't ask you for a salary or anything like that. Paul says, but there comes a time when the Spirit says so. You've got to respond to the move of the Spirit. So now he begins to testify unto them how he had gone from house to house, how he had gone from synagogue to synagogue, how he had done nothing but share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and set a favorable example uh, for them along the way. Amen. I wonder, my brothers and sisters, how many of you, how many of us, how many of, can we say uh, that we have set the best example, the best positive example, the best godly example that we could possibly uh, provide for our family, for our children, uh, for the church, for the community. Amen. When people call your name, what do they think about? Amen. Don't answer that. Amen. I, I don't know. Leola Green, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. Thomas Breen, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Leola, it is so good to see uh, that you're with us on tonight. Amen. Happy New Year to you. To God be the glory. Listen, when people think about you, what do you suppose they think? Do they think, oh, there's a good person. There's a sanctified person. There's a saved person. There's a person that is filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a person that's a shepherd. There's a person that, that, that is loyal unto God. What do people think about you? Or do they think negative things about you? Amen. You see, you're not living for people. You're living for God. And as, as you live for God, you ought to represent God the best way that you can. Stanford Locust, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So, Marie, uh, Eleanor Bell says, Paul has delivered the word of God. Now we have to follow the example set for us that Paul set before us. Amen. I agree with that 100%. Amen. Just as Paul did everything for God that he could, everything that he delivered to us by the word of God, by the example that he, of his life, we ought to imitate that. And we ought to be more and more um, involved with community activities and community things. Pastor Dewberry, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. I call her pastor, but she's not. Amen. Monica, thank you for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So Paul now says, hey, listen, I've done my job with you all. I've done the best that I could. I've done all that I could. And so I'm not going to be worried about anything. But let me caution you, Paul says, when I leave you, and this is what typically happens uh, in churches of today, when I leave you, do not revert back to your old ways. Do not go back to following the law. Do not go back to allowing these Judaizers and, and these people that don't believe in Jesus Christ to turn you away from the church or away from the Lord. Don't let that happen because Paul says, and it's coming up later on, uh, as soon as I leave, these people are going to come in like mosquitoes in the night and they're going to attack you and try to convince you not to follow God. Amen. Monica Duber says, we are made in God's image, so we should reflect God's spirit. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. What, what, what more can we do? We ought to reflect God's spirit and stop letting people control our mind, control our actions, and control our speech. Amen. You know, I, 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 I'd rather be a leader than a follower. Amen. That's just me. 
But I've learned that in order to be a good leader, then I must also be a good follower. Wanda Blunt, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on tonight. Amen. Thomas Breen says, let our Lord and Savior always have first place in our hearts. Amen. And in our lives. Amen. That's what I meant, Thomas, when I said this a little earlier. I said, in the year 2024, we ought to let God be a, the number one priority in our lives. Amen. He ought to have first place in our lives. Well, whatever we do, whatever we say, wherever we go, God ought to uh, take that number one priority spot. Listen, is Jesus Christ, <clears throat> is family, is church. Amen. Did I say that right? Jesus Christ, family, church. Amen. So we need to make sure that God has the number one seat the number one priority in our lives, to God be the glory. I know I'm right about that. So Paul says, now that, listen, I, I want to go to Jerusalem, and if I stop at Ephesus, I'm going to get bogged down there. So, so therefore, I'm not even going to stop in Ephesus. I'm going to press on and press my way onto Jerusalem. Now we're in Acts chapter 20, and we're on verse number 22 and verse number uh, through 24. Amen. So Paul says, I go now bound, amen, to Jerusalem in the spirit. What was Paul talking about when he says, I go bound in the spirit? Paul is simply saying, I'm being led by the spirit of God to make my way to Jerusalem. Amen. My brothers and sisters, how many times can you say that you have been led by the spirit of God? You are being led by the spirit of God and truly know that you've been led by the Spirit of God or are being led by the Spirit of God. A lot of people will say, well, you know, the Spirit told me this. They haven't talked to God. They haven't yielded to the Lord. Their relationship with Jesus is not right. But yet, all of a sudden, they get a bright idea, and God must have gave it to me. I ain't going to mess with that no more. I'm going to leave that right there. Pastor Dewberry says, Jewish leaders in the temple did not want the disciples teaching in the name of Jesus. So what did they do? They, they wasn't uh, 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 present uh, in, in, in the arena when Paul taught. And they didn't want anybody else teaching in the name of Jesus. I don't know why. Uh, I do know why uh, they did not want the name of Jesus taught. But nonetheless, when you get away from the gospel, when you get away from the word of God, when you get away from teaching and preaching the word of God, listen, God did not call me to get up in the pulpit on every Sunday morning and tell fairy tales. Amen. God did not call me every Sunday morning to get up in the pulpit and start talking about football only. Amen. It's all right to have a, a few comments or, 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 or whatever, but not the whole sermon. Amen. Listen, football play, football never saved anybody. Amen. Politics never saved anybody. So we must make sure that we talk about the one that died for us the one that rose again on, on Sunday morning for us, and the one who provided our salvation. That's who we need to be talking about more and more and more. Deacon is Jennifer Goodman Hayes. Thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on tonight. Amen. So Paul says that he's led by the Spirit of God to testify in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await him. Amen. So what Paul simply says is this. I know somewhat of what lived, what lies ahead for me. The road is not going to be easy. The road is filled with mines. There are people waiting around the corner or whatever in order to throw me off my, my course, in order to break my focus upon the Lord. Paul says, the more I preach, the more persecution I'm going to face. I want to share with you today that the same thing is for you and for me, the more closer you get to God, the more you teach and preach the word of God, the more persecution people will bring against you and you will suffer. Hey, so my brothers and sisters, uh, so uh, Thomas Breen says, remember that our God will forgive you. And I praise God and I thank you, uh, Jesus. Oh, I, I, I like that. God is a, is a forgiver. Amen. Why? Because he sent Jesus to die for our sins and to forgive us of all of our sins. 
So don't think that, 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 that you've got to carry this burden all your days and all your life. Amen. Listen, God forgives us. God will forgive us. But sometimes, my brothers and sisters, whatever sin you have committed will live with you. But your task and my task is to not let that sin control you. Amen. Not let that sin keep you from worshiping and praising and serving God. Amen. You know, we think about the negative so much. I did this and I did that and, and I'm so sorry. Listen, if God has forgiven you, here's what you need to do. You need to forgive yourself. Amen. Forgive yourself and move on. Worshiping God and praising God. Don't keep sitting there under a weight that God has already lifted. Amen. All of us have done some things that we are ashamed of. All of us have done some things that we are sorry for. Amen. But can I let you know, because I know and have a relationship with Jesus, and because I know he has forgiven me and the Holy Spirit now abides within me, yes, I carry that in, in, in the recesses of my mind, but my number one priority, my number one thought is to praise the Lord, to serve the Lord, and worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen, live like, here it is, live like you want to get to heaven. Hmm, interesting thought there. Live like you really want to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. I'm right there with you, Kathy. To God be the glory. All right? That's where I was too. But nonetheless, God looked beyond my faults. And he saw my needs. Amen. He saw that I need salvation. He saw that I needed a Savior. Amen. And Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. So Paul now makes his way, and he says that he is bound. By, so I like the way he said that. I'm bound. I'm tied. I'm chained. and I'm shackled by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I can't break loose from that. Amen. So he has to go wherever the Holy Spirit dictates and leads him to go. Amen, somebody. So therefore, he says that the Holy Spirit testified in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await him. So Paul says, I know somewhat, I don't know all, but I know somewhat of what lies ahead of me. So therefore, he says, I want to finish my race with joy. Amen. Can I say this emphatically to somebody tonight? Amen. I don't know who you are, but don't let the devil steal your joy. Amen. Don't let the devil steal your peace. Amen. Don't let the devil take your peace and your joy away from you. Stop worrying about what has happened and what's going on. God's got you. God knows already, already knows about it. Amen. So give it over to the Lord. And the Lord will work it out. The Lord has worked it out. And listen, by this time next week, you're going to be looking at this and you're going to be saying, thank God for Jesus. See, sometimes God allows stuff to happen in our lives to draw us closer to him, to teach us a lesson. Theodosia Jones, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. God wants to grow you. God wants to mature you. God wants to give you a spiritual uh, 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 education through the word of God and through the trials and tribulations. God wants you to know that there's nothing too hard for him. Amen. He already knows about it. He already knows. So stop worrying about it. Amen. That's easy to say. But stop worrying about it and let go and let God. The least the uh, people, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. Eleanor Bell says, Amen to God be glory. He is my Savior. He has given me peace, joy, and hope. Amen. What more do we want him to do? Amen. He's provided salvation, and then he fills us with his peace, fills us with his joy and his hope. Amen. And we, by faith, continue to walk and live for him. That's all we can do, y'all. Amen. It, don't, it ain't nothing deep. Oh, I, I'm going I'm to listen to a deep preacher. Listen. 
Paul was deep, but he was simple. And he simplified the word so that you and I could understand it. And you and I need to do the same thing. Amen. Monica Duper says, worry is a feeling. Feelings do not make good decisions. Monica, I'm going to write that one down. Amen. Because that's a true statement. You don't get tied up and wrapped up in your feelings. Amen. Because generally when you get wrapped up and tied up in your feelings, you make bad decisions. Amen. Because you're being governed by yourself, by your emotions, rather than being governed by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Monica. I needed that one for myself. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to stop right there. And we're going to pick this up next week. We're going to be in the same chapter, chapter 20. And we're going to finish this chapter. And we're going to begin our focus on these very same verses for next week. Amen. To God be the glory. So we're going to start <coughs> at verses 22 and 24 for next week. To God be the glory. Thank you so much uh, for sharing with me tonight, for sharing with us. Our prayer is that God will continue to bless each and every one of you. Uh, May Clark, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, that God will keep you and sustain you throughout uh, this year. And God will allow you to focus more and more on Him and less and less on things of this world. I'm so glad that so many of you made it over uh, into 2024, that God is still in the blessing and healing and keeping business. My brothers and sisters, don't forget, if you want to be a blessing to this ministry, to this church, you can do so. You can pull up the app called Givelify. And when you pull up the app called Givelify, tap on that and search for Fourth Baptist Church 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. Tap on that again. Enter the amount that you want to bless the Lord. And I want you to tap on that again. And you have given uh, unto the Lord. You have blessed the Lord in bountiful ways. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. Or you can write a check. Address it to 4th Baptist Church, 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. Slip it in the mail, and we will gladly receive it and give God the praise and honor and the glory for your sacrifice that you made unto him. Or you can write a check and bring it by the church, and our members, our staff, will be there to receive it. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And as we begin to leave tonight, I want you to know that God loves you. God loves you. God loves you, and so do I. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about that. Amen. I want you to continue to pray uh, for my friend Harold Richardson, uh, and we want you to pray for uh, many others who are sick at this time and going through. Amen. I know who they are. They know who they are. Uh, but we're just going to say pray much for your brothers and your sisters. Let us go to God with a word of prayer. All wise, eternal God, our Heavenly Father, once again, we come before your presence and we say thank you, dear God. Thank you, dear God, for allowing us to know that there is nothing too hard for you, that you, dear God, just as you raised this young boy that fell out of the window, can handle all of our situations and all of our problems as well. Father God, we love you, we praise, praise you, and we magnify and glorify your name. Bless your children now, dear God. Give us peace, give us hope, give us joy. Give us happiness. Give us, dear God, that which we need, that we might keep our focus upon thee and thee alone. Thank you, dear God, for everyone that was with us tonight and those who desired to be but could not be. For whatever reason it may be, we give you praise, dear God. Keep them now, sustain them, allow your providential care to be with them once again on this evening. For we ask all of these things in the matchless, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. God bless your hearts, my brothers and my sisters. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Sister George. Uh, and we want you to know uh, that we love all of you. Amen. And we want the best for you. Fourth Baptist Church is a caring church. It is a church that loves. It is a church of peace. It is a church that loves the Lord. It is a church that will serve the Lord. 
Until next week, amen. Until next week, we will hope and pray that we see you again on Sunday morning, 9 a.m. for Sunday school, 10 a.m. for church. Won't you come and be a blessing that you might share with us the goodness of the Lord. God bless you and good night to all of my brothers and my sisters. Good night.